Plus, watching and waiting the latest on the diplomatic standoff over Ukraine as the U.S. prepares troops to respond to an invasion. And the big name in Tejano music, inspiring his fans to take COVID seriously. It's Tuesday, January 25th. Good Morning Texas continues in 30 seconds. It is 6 o'clock in morning. We begin this morning with a story you saw first as a push alert on the 25 News mobile app. I'm Joey Horta. And I'm Brianna Malloy. Residents of a Waco area apartment complex are waking up to some heavy damage this morning. We're going to show you some images that the Waco Fire Department tweeted out. They say when they first got to this building on Chapel Hill around midnight, they found fire coming through the roof. Thankfully, everything is under control now, but the fire did cause damage for multiple folks. It heavily damaged the attics of two apartments. Other apartments are now dealing with smoke and water damage. It's unclear right now if anyone was hurt. We're deep into winter now, and overnight temperatures can be brutal, especially for those who don't have a warm place to stay. Now local organizations are asking for donations to help the homeless community. 25 News reporter Bain Froney is live from the Salvation Army with more on how you can help. Bain, good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Joey and Brianna. That's right. Now our homeless community every day has to brace the elements outside, whether it's raining, snowing, or just simply very cold out. Now, local organizations here are actually trying to help them as much as they can, and they're also leaning on you for help as well. With temperatures reaching the low 20s some nights, the Salvation Army and Mission Waco both have warming shelters as a place for those in need to have a place to sleep. The Salvation Army utilizes their shelters and even have around 20 extra cots to be placed in their community kitchen in case of overflow and on the coldest of nights even set out blankets on the floor because of the amount of people in need of shelter. Well, that could be a lot of people in here uh, on any given night depending on the temperature and what the weather's like. Both Mission Waco and the Salvation Army are asking for coats and blankets so they can help as many people as possible stay warm throughout the rest of the winter. Now, if you'd like to donate items such as, you know, items or even just money or even donating some of your time, you can find more information on both, both Mission Waco and the Salvation Army's websites. In Waco, Bain Froney, 25 News. Mm -hmm. All right, Bain, thank you. You know, if you've got a heater, a nice jacket to keep you warm, today not so bad. Uh, not everyone has that luxury, though. Right, but we are seeing a lot of fog on the road, so you're going to want to be careful. Yeah. Josh, how's it looking for us? Yeah, temperature's not that bad. It's enough that you probably still want a jacket just because when you walk out to scenes like this, it does feel rather damp outside, so you'll be more comfortable in a jacket. But the bigger story is the fog out there as we're heading through these morning hours. You see things have cleaned up a little bit there in Colleen. Copper's Cove is still socked in thick with the fog, as you see on our extra co eagle eye there. But as you look at the visibility map, you'll notice we're seeing visibility starting to improve for some of our northwestern counties already seven mile visibility in Hillsborough, 10 mile in Mejia, but still a quarter mile visibility in Waco, close to zero in Gatesville. And it's going to be areas mainly west of I-35 that deal with this now this morning, but even as close as the I-35 corridor, you'll still be dealing with it. That's why we do have a dense fog advisory in effect for the entire area through around 10 o'clock. Notice we don't have it to our north. That's because a weak front is starting to swing on through, and that wind shift will be enough to stir things up and kind of move some of that fog out of the way. You'll notice this on future track frog fog product. You'll notice that uh, fog trying to clear out once we get through around 7, 8 o'clock. I think after around 9, 10 o'clock, we're all clear of it. And then we'll be talking about a cloudier rest of the day until we can clear that out later on this afternoon. Temperatures are in the 30s west of I-35, 40s and 50s east, so it is a little chilly in spots. But by afternoon, we'll all be dealing with the upper 50s. It'll be a pretty nice day. Oh, Albeit a little mild for this time of year, a little cool, 57 degrees, feels like 54 in the afternoon. Notice once we get into the later parts of the afternoon into the evening, though, the clearing skies take over. That's going to set us up for a freeze overnight. We'll be in the upper 50s this afternoon. We should normally be around 60, and then later on tonight, falling down into the low 30s. A freeze likely for areas northwest of Waco, to, or northeast of Waco, Temple, Colleen. Rest of us going to be flirting with that freezing mark. It won't be a pipe busting freeze. You don't have to worry about that. Bring in the pets, bring in the plants. Don't want those getting damaged here as we head through the overnight hours. 57 today, 53 tomorrow, 52 on Thursday. We'll get another front coming in here Friday. That'll bring in rain chances, keep our temperatures in the 40s, but it also brings in drier air behind it. Look at that weekend. Temperatures in the 60s and plenty of sunshine. Going to be gorgeous. Mm, looks good, Josh. Thanks for that. 606, and there's a new court ruling now on mask mandates this morning. It comes as many parents and teachers across the country ask whether kids should still be required 
to wear those in school. Brianna Alley has the latest. This morning, a major new ruling from the Supreme Court of New York on the polarizing issue of masks. A judge striking down New York's mask mandate for all public schools and locations. The Supreme Court has ruled that the mandates are unconstitutional. Overnight, Governor Kathy Hochul saying her administration strongly disagrees with the ruling and the New York State Education Department telling superintendents across the state schools must continue to follow the mask rule while they appeal. The debate over masks in schools also playing out in Virginia, where seven districts are suing the new Republican governor over his executive order, which allows parents to opt their children out of school mask requirements. In California, schools in Los Angeles are now tightening requirements, telling students they must wear a non-cloth mask with a nose wire at all times, including during sports events. Children are getting COVID at record numbers, which means classes in schools are shutting down because of it, and also they're spreading it to their parents and grandparents, other family members. More than 1.1 million children in the U.S. tested positive for COVID last week, but pediatric hospitalizations fell 11 percent during the same time period. And people age 17 and under still have the lowest number of hospitalizations from COVID compared to any other age group. It all comes as 31 states report a plateau or decrease in new COVID cases overall. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. A Woodway dentist says the pandemic is taking a toll on people's teeth. Dr. Locke says he's seeing more cracked and fractured teeth, grinding and jaw pain than he's ever seen in his 35 years as a dentist. And he's not the only one, according to a survey by the American Dental Association. 60% of dentists surveyed said they're seeing the same thing. Of course, the big question is why, and the answer probably won't surprise you. It's stress. And we all know that the pandemic brought plenty of that. Now, when it comes to cracked teeth, Dr. Locke explains what you should keep an eye out for. Headaches or neck aches, jaw pain, um, uh, or, or discomfort with eating or chewing. That can be a, a muscle jaw related TMJ scenario. And cracked or broken teeth are a result of the stresses placed on teeth from clenching and grinding. Dr. Locke says oftentimes it's hard to diagnose these conditions yourself, so you want to make sure you don't skip out on those checkups. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll dive deeper into what dentists are seeing and why. New treatments for COVID-19 could help keep high-risk patients out of the hospital, but nearly a month after their FDA authorization, they're still hard to come by. Here in Central Texas, Baylor Scott White is prescribing Pfizer and Merck's new oral treatments for COVID patients. Just over 500 courses of these treatments are available in both McLennan and Bell counties together. The state health department points to manufacturing issues for the slow rollout. In general, in healthcare, we are encouraged by the new drugs and we're hopeful that they themselves can be helpful, but they also may be paving a way to, to other drugs that become more easily used by larger numbers of people. Now, these treatments are meant for at-risk patients, people with conditions like heart disease, lung disease, or diabetes, and they could help stop mild cases from getting worse, but only if prescribed early. Around the world, people know Little Joe and La Familia for their groundbreaking Tejano music. But nowadays, almost as many people know that group as ambassadors of good health as they urge fans and others to get a COVID vaccine. 25 News reporter Dennis Turner takes a closer look at how the group is responding to the pandemic and why it's opening more doors. Little Joe takes to the stage in perhaps his most important performance before an empty concert hall. What's wrong with this picture? Well, what's wrong with anything these days? Wear a mask, wash your hands, social distance with your friends. COVID still has us partially at bay, worrying about the next outbreak of the next variant. Joe's performance in this TV spot came in part because he and La Familia did such a good job of keeping fans and others concerned about little Joe's illness updated. That was, that was a close call for my niece, my daughter, my wife, and myself. Una vida sana. Joe's illness started in the early days of the pandemic. Since his recovery, he's preached the gospel 
of vaccination. I made a video uh, alerting people, letting them know that I was, um, you know, um, that I had tested positive, that uh, it's a dangerous virus and very contagious, you know, and because of my experience with my family, they need to get vaccinated. La Familia had band leader Thomas Cruz take the lead in posting written updates on Little Joe. Cruz told fans the only place they could get official information was the La Familia Facebook page. A few status updates followed until Little Joe was well enough to make the video that starts his vaccine crusade. It's not just about you, but those around you, your family, your friends. Be proactive and be honest and transparent. Public relations executive Liz Anderson has helped a lot of brands with her own pandemic PR model, which puts truth at the forefront. I've said this before, it's also new to everybody. Um, and you cannot over communicate what you're doing in your business to customers. It can help polish a brand like Little Joe and La Familia. Getting in front of the COVID issue and keeping fans current buys a lot of credibility on the streets. Credibility that put Little Joe on this stage to help San Antonio and its people remember the important thing that will help them survive the pandemic. I wish people would really consider the consequences of not getting vaccinated. Again, not just saving fans of La Familia, but La Familia del Mundo, the family of the world. Do it for San Antonio! In Temple, Dennis Turner, 25 News. Still ahead from us this morning, the story everyone's talking about, Biden blowback. The comment that the president made during a press conference that's blowing up the internet and drawing criticism from both sides of the aisle. Now to the story that's turning heads today, President Biden drawing some pushback over his foul language to a Fox News reporter caught on a hot mic. And if you don't want your kids to hear this, hit that mute button right now. Take a look. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. The answer came after the reporter asked the president, would you think inflation is a political liability in the midterms? At the time, the president speaking about rising inflation and costs for Americans. This is not the first time Biden's been overheard using a curse word on a microphone. Will diplomacy rule the day? Well, that's the big question as Russian troops sit near the country's border with Ukraine. As Brett Conway reports, the U.S. is hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Glimpses of day-to-day -day life in Ukraine as the threat of invasion looms. More than 127,000 Russian troops have amassed at the border, waiting on word from Russian President Vladimir Putin. But war began here nearly eight years ago, when Russia annexed Crimea, which has a major port on the Black Sea. Russian-backed separatists also took control of the Donbass region, an ongoing conflict that's claimed some 13,000 lives. But with Russian troops at the border, fear that this war will escalate. As many as 8,500 U.S. troops have been put on heightened alert for a possible deployment to Eastern Europe, the Pentagon said Monday. They'll come from bases uh, throughout the United States, uh, and they'll be, if they're deployed, they would deploy as part of the NATO response force. U.S. officials say there's still room for diplomacy. We obviously want to see that succeed, but we've also seen Vladimir Putin add to his force capability, so he has shown no signs of de-escalating, quite the contrary. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's something we're all watching with great concern. Concern and uncertainty. Nobody knows what's in his head right now. We don't believe that he has actually made a decision for another invasion, but he is increasing his option. We want to make sure uh, that he fully understands the consequences should he incur again. Nobody wants to see another war. Nobody wants to see another conflict. But if our NATO allies need some support, we want to make sure they know we're there for them. Britt Conway, 25 News. The Department of Homeland Security says Russia could launch cyber attacks against the U.S. if America responds to a potential invasion of Ukraine. The warning says Russia has a range of offensive cyber tools that it could employ against U.S. networks. The bulletin also says Russian hackers could have already prepared for a cyber attack during previous operations. We have new details this morning in the search for a man who ambushed and killed a Harris County police officer. That suspect has been identified as 51-year-old Oscar Rosales. Rosales is still on the run right now, but police are vowing to bring him in. Here's Petrina Adger. 
Houston police believe 51-year-old Oscar Rosales is still in the Houston area and wants the public to be on the lookout, calling him a bold and very dangerous fugitive. I can tell you right now, we have video evidence of him shooting our constable. And I want everybody to get into the, the fight of finding him. Rosales accused of shooting and killing Corporal Charles Galloway as he stepped out of his patrol unit during a traffic stop Sunday. Police say they recovered the white Toyota Avalon Rosales was in during the shooting. The DA's office announcing to that Rosales is being charged with capital murder. Upon apprehension, we'll ask a judge in Harris County to hold him without bail. Law enforcement and the DA's office not releasing much details about the investigation. Police surrounding the home of Rosales' common-law wife, Reina Marquez, Sunday afternoon. She, along with Rosales' brother, Henry, in court today after they were arrested and charged with tampering with evidence, accused of covering up Rosales' involvement in the murder. Anybody that's assisting him a felon, and they know he's a felon, and wanted for capital murder, uh, we're coming after them as well. Chief Troy Finner says law enforcement and the DA's office are working together to find Rosales. A $60,000 reward is being offered to anyone with information leading to his capture. 620 now. If you're shopping for a new car, you might have a hard time finding exactly what you want. The options are limited because the automakers are struggling to produce cars thanks to the computer chip shortage. Modern cars are loaded with computer technology and it's creating a major backlog. Some of the dealerships right here in Central Texas are so low on inventory they don't have any new models on their lot. Debbie Gossett didn't let that shortage prevent her from getting her dream car. And I found like the needle in the haystack, the exact car I was looking for. How she found it is going to surprise you. You might even shake your head when you hear about the great length she went to to get it. We'll tell you all about her car buying adventure and how to find the one you want in our next half hour. Coming up from us, how you can make a difference in the lives of homeless people around Central Texas. There's an event happening today that's calling on the community to help out. 622 now, your weather forecast is just minutes away. Before you step outside this morning, let's get an update on that fog. I know a lot of people are heading out the door. You can see it behind Josh there. How's it looking for us? Yeah, it's still looking foggy in Copper's Cove on our Extra Cove e Eagle Eye there. You can see the uh, dis visibility is still really low there in Copper's Cove. But in other parts of Central Texas, we are seeing a little bit of improvement. Again, we've seen uh, Mejia clocking in. I don't believe that 10-mile visibility, but 5-mile uh, visibility currently in Hillsborough and Corsicana. Just saw things get a little worse in Land Passes, but Bell County, you're clearing out a little bit. 2 to 4-mile visibility and a quarter mile visibility currently in Waco and in Gatesville. But we do have a little bit of a wind shift swinging on through. That'll slowly lead to a little bit of improvement. And some areas may clear out before others, but I think a lot of us will be dealing with this fog through around 9, 10 o'clock. That's officially where this dense fog advisory goes till. It does include all of central Texas and does not include areas to our north. So a sign that there is some drier air trying to work in from the north. And our future track fog products trying to figure that out. It isn't capturing it well right now, but it does show that general idea that things will be improving as we head towards 9, 10 o'clock and then we won't have any issues as we go through the afternoon. Out to the west, it is chilly. 35 now in Land Passes, 39 Meridian and Gatesville, where the fog formed initially and we saw that rain yesterday. That's where dew points are higher. That's why we're waking up to temperatures in the 40s and the 50s along and east of I-35. But still, you need to give yourself some extra time here on that morning commute. 41 at 8 o'clock, 47 at 10 o'clock, 51 at noon. We'll be back at the upper 50s this afternoon. Clouds will hang on once that fog clears out, but once we get into the afternoon, clearer skies will start to work in. And as that dry air works in, it'll set us up for a colder night tonight. Upper 50s this afternoon, pretty much area wide. Later on tonight, we'll see those temperatures fall into the low 30s. A freeze likely for areas northwest of Waco Temple Clean. Not going to be a pipe busting freeze, but you do need to bring in the pets and the plants and protect them here as we go through the overnight hours. Notice this cloud cover gets out of the way. We have clear skies overnight into tomorrow, but it does look like another system will be coming in late Thursday into Friday, and that'll bring with it a chance of showers starting Thursday late in the day, and then Friday during the morning we'll have the potential for some rain, temperatures hanging around in the 40s. By the time we get into the middle of next week, though, that's when we could be approaching the 70s. Look at that weekend. Temperatures in the 60s, guys. That's going to be nice. Weekend. I love the sound yeah. of it. Good temperatures, just... even better. Yeah.
Can't wait. <laughs> the San Francisco 49ers may have a secret weapon as they head into Sunday's NFC Championship game. Emotional support French Bulldogs. Now, I know this might sound far-fetched, but it's true. It started in 2018 with a breeding company. They got a call from the team. The team said they wanted an official emotional support animal for players who might be going through a rough time. Now enter Zoe and Rookie. They are so cute. Two of the most ferocious members of the 49ers family. Oh, man, look at that face. <laughs> look at those eyes. <laughs> so... You know what? I think we might need one around here. Yeah, I'm all for it. We, have, we go through some rough times. Yeah, sure. Well, we'll take it. All Everybody's right. Everybody's happier with a dog around. <laughs> yeah. And switching gears now, it's time to find out who's going to win this morning's Good Morning Texas coffee mug. Our lucky winner today is Thomas Dickey. Congrats, Thomas. We'll let you know how to pick up your mug today. We'll be in touch. And folks, if you want one, just go to our website, kxxv.com contest. Click the mug and give us your email address. We'll put your name in the drawing for our next giveaway coming up here tomorrow. And we got a lot more to talk about in our next half hour. So stick with us at 627 now. You're watching Good Morning Texas. Now at 630, giving back. The Central Texas group working to bring a little warmth to the homeless. Plus, more and more teachers leaving their jobs, what's behind the shift, and what local districts are doing to keep teachers on board. And information overload, how we can all be more responsible when it comes to what we share on social media. It's Tuesday, January 25th. Good Morning Texas continues right now. Connecting Central Texas. This is Good Morning Texas. Good Morning Texas. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Joey Horta. And I'm Brianna Malloy. Now, heading into the end of January, those overnight temperatures can be brutal. This is especially true for people facing homelessness. Now, that's why some local organizations are asking for donations to help the homeless community. 25 News reporter Bain Froney joins us now from the Salvation Army with more on how you can help. Bain, good morning. Good morning, Joey and Brianna. That's right. Now, throughout the community, there are so many homeless people that are unable to find shelter during these cold months, especially when it's raining, just cold and even snowing. But organizations like the Salvation Army are making it their mission to help those in need. It's easy to overlook something as simple as having a roof over your head. But for many in our community, that's a luxury that they don't have. We don't know what it's like to be cold and homeless, no place to go to get warmed up. Especially in the winter months, overnight temperatures can reach as low as the 20s. This becomes uh, almost unbearable. The Salvation Army and Mission Waco both offer warming shelters, giving those in need a place to sleep. Back in December, we kind of went back to sort of a 24-7 model, um, partly due to the COVID, but we were also doing it for the expectation of the cold weather. Salvation Army shelters have room every night for those trying to escape the cold. Plus, almost 20 extra cots that can be placed right here in the warming center. Well, that could be a lot of people in here uh, on any given night, depending on the temperature and what the weather's like. People can stop in the shelter or community kitchen for a snack, a warm cup of coffee, or just a place out of the cold. But the lack of warm clothing can also be dangerous. Just think about what that is like if you go outside without a jacket on or with a hoodie on. It's cold. Now, multiply that by six, seven, eight, nine hours. Which is where you can help. The Salvation Army and Mission Waco are both accepting coats, blankets, and sock donations. People that we see uh, through our Salvation Army community kitchen or a homeless shelter only have a hoodie or something that's not really fit for being out in cold weather. And with 2021 being a difficult year for many, Carlton Willis with Mission Waco anticipates an uptick in our homeless population. We've had, you know, an issue with affordable housing, uh, with getting folks housed right now and, and being able to keep jobs with the everything that's going on with COVID and the cold. But no matter how many are in need, both organizations want to make sure no one's left in the cold. It's really important that a place like this exists so that individuals have a place to come where they can warm up. Now, if you'd like to donate money, time, or even some items, you can always visit the Salvation Army's website or Mission Waco's website. In Waco, Bain Ferroni, 25 News. Bain, thanks for that. And one part of the weather that is impacting a lot of people today is the fog that's rolling in. Yeah, we saw it when we got up this morning. Mm -hmm. It is getting a little better, but 
You're going to want to keep an eye on it. How's it looking, Josh? Yeah, you're going to want to keep an eye on it and plan for it as we go through the morning. Let's get you out the door with three things you need to know. One of them is that foggy start to the day. We're dealing with visibility dropping below a mile in many spots and a dense fog advisory that officially goes through 10 a.m. A freeze will be possible tonight for Central Texas as drier air works in. That'll help to clear out that fog here initially and then lead to that freeze later on tonight. And then looking like showers and chilly weather to end the week. There's a view right now. What should be our extra co Eagle Line Coppers Cove? You'll notice visibility dropping below a mile in some spots, but we are seeing a little bit of improvement in our northeastern counties. You can thank a little weak front that is moving on through. A dense fog advisory officially runs until 10 o'clock for most of central Texas outlined here in the light gray. That is where visibilities will drop below a mile. Notice we don't have it to the north, though, a sign that that drier air is coming in, and that should help to lead to pushing that fog out of the way once we get into the uh, middle of the morning. So by 9, 10 o'clock, I think things really start to improve. They may improve for some spots a little sooner as that drier air reaches sooner, but for most of us, 9, 10 o'clock, things will improve. Now it is chilly west of I-35 this morning. This is where you didn't see the rain yesterday, and so temperatures are starting off chillier with temperatures in the 30s. And then where you saw more of that rain, that's where you're waking up to 40s and 50s. That's also where the fog happened a little bit earlier this morning. Now it will clear out by again by 9, 10 o'clock, and then the clouds will hold on for the first part of the day. I think by afternoon, though, we'll see some clearing take over, and we'll bring in partly cloudy skies by late afternoon. That'll push our temperatures back into the 50s later on this afternoon. That's when we'll wake up or uh, we'll get into the 50s this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, though, waking up to a light freeze. So bringing the pets, bringing the plants, not going to have to protect the pipes with this one because it is just a light freeze. We're dry tomorrow. By Thursday, though, our next system gets close to us, and by evening, we could be tracking a few showers. We'll keep that going on into Friday with temperatures in the 40s behind a cold front that'll work through. That'll bring in drier air and lead us to start in the 20s on Saturday. We have some chilly mornings Saturday and Sunday, but look at the rest of the weekend. Pretty gorgeous. Temperatures in the 60s in the afternoon. We could even be approaching 70s by the middle of next week. Wow, that sounds pretty nice, Josh. Thank you. And half of first year teachers in Texas are calling it quits now, according to a new study from the University of Houston. It's forcing school districts all across Central Texas to get creative with incentives to keep them here. But are they enough? 25 News reporter Nakia Simon explains what's behind new teachers heading for the exit. The retention rate for first year teachers dropped nearly in half since 2010 in Texas. School districts across Central Texas are working to combat that. And so what we try to do is to focus on helping our first year teachers with classroom management, which is a struggle for all first year teachers. Educators say other challenges like low pay wages, high stress and challenging work conditions are causing them to leave. So newer teachers actually didn't have any anything else to compare these years too. They they don't know any different. School districts are pushing new incentives to keep them on the job, like Waco ISD's new retention bonus that will begin this year. Teachers can receive up to $10,000 that will be paid in three installments. We have that program beginning and the first installment that's going to be paid out to our teachers will be in December of 2022. Our first year teachers have the ability to make $55,000, $57,000 with zero years of experience. And if they have experience and they join from another district, there's an ability to make even more money on top of that. But for some, more pay isn't cutting it. It's going to take more than incentives to keep teachers in classrooms. I feel like the profession as a whole has been generally kind of disregarded and, and generally disrespected for a long time. Um, the autonomy of teachers has been completely stripped. Reporting in Waco, Nakia Simon, 25 News. And for more on this story, just head to our website, kxxv.com. You can also download the 25 News mobile app. Next on 25 News, a shortage of new cars at dealerships is frustrating buyers. When we come back here, how one woman went to the extreme to find the exact car she wanted. It's 640. Stay with us. Surprise, surprise, the pandemic has caused yet another problem. Dentists say that they're seeing more severe issues because of skip checkups and stress. A local dentist explains what you can do to keep your teeth healthy. Dr. Corbett Locke has been a dentist for 35 years, but he's never seen so many of these. We're seeing more cracked teeth than probably uh, as long as I've ever been in practice. Cracked and chipped teeth, grinding, jaw pain. These issues are often tied to stress, and we all know that the pandemic came with plenty of that. Wow, we're sure seeing a lot of this. It's got to be the pandemic. 
Dr. Locke isn't the only one. According to an American Dental Association study from March, 60% of dentists who responded said they've seen an increase in stress-related conditions like chipped and cracked teeth. Cracked or broken teeth are a result of the stresses placed on teeth from clenching and grinding. This increase coincides with a decrease in checkups. According to a report released in February by the CareQuest Institute of Oral Health, more than one in 10 people said they had delayed getting dental care, either because of cost, lack of insurance, or fear of exposure to COVID. It's only going to get worse with time, so if you have a problem with a tooth, the key is getting in and getting it taken care of in a timely fashion. Both the CDC and the American Dental Association echo this advice, saying dental care is essential care and should be continued throughout the pandemic. Advice that Dr. Locke hopes will help him see less of this. If you hadn't been to see your dentist, uh, make an appointment because it's always better to treat problems early rather than later. The ADA also says that dentists are seeing people come in with more advanced gum disease. Dr. Locke says the best way to prevent that, same thing, keep scheduling those cleanings. If you're shopping for a new car, good luck. Right now, it's pretty hard to find exactly what you want with all the options you're looking for. Some of the dealerships here in Central Texas are so low on inventory that they don't even have any models on hand. Car buyers like Debbie Gossett know exactly what they're looking for. So I tried to go find one to test drive and nobody has any. She traveled more than a thousand, yes, a thousand miles to buy this Lincoln Aviator in the exact interior and exterior colors she likes. And I found like the needle in the haystack, the exact car I was looking for. She flew to Abilene from California and drove her new Lincoln all the way home. A 21 hour road trip. AAA Texas says you can blame it on the computer chip shortage. We're continuing to see supply shortages, supply chain issues uh, that are impacting auto manufacturers. Uh, of course, we're, we're told that that situation is going to improve soon and, and, and production is ramping up. Inventory is extraordinarily low at the Richard Carr Cadillac dealership in Waco. There's not even one new Cadillac on the lot. They don't have any. You can still find the car you want. It just depends on how far you're willing to go. I, I'm always down for an adventure, so it was actually really fun to do. Uh -huh. and. I love hanging out with myself. <laughs> her advice to buyers in her situation? Cars are so expensive right now. You should get exactly what you want and be willing to make a sacrifice. Fly across the country and make a road trip back by yourself if you have to. Get yourself a little ice chest for your road trip and get all your snacks lined up. <laughs> she calls her new car Blanche, just like the Golden Girl. Now, we reached out to Richard Carr Cadillac at Waco. They didn't take up our offer for an interview, but it's important to make clear the shortage is impacting lots of dealerships, not just that one. Back to Debbie for a second. She says her old car had 99,000 miles on it and was only worth $5,000 when she first looked it up. But the shortage doubled the value of her old car. She ended up getting 10,000 for it. AAA has a car buying service on its website. You can look up the exact car you want. It'll tell you where to find it. You can also still find a deal. You just have to do your homework to make it happen. And if you like road trips, even better. Yeah, just like Debbie. And still ahead from us, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the internet never sleeps. We're taking a look at what that means for the spreading of misinformation. Good Morning Texas returns. You know, one minute doesn't feel like a lot of time, but it can be an eternity when it comes to the spread of misinformation online. Lauren Casey has some tips on how to recognize news you can use and how you can better share it. And spell your first and last name so I have it on camera. Yes, Sarah Beth, S-A-R-A-B-E-T-H, last name Drybread, D-R-Y-B-R-E-A-D. Okay, so pause for a minute. This is Sarah Beth, and she's on the Bicentennial Committee in the town of Edinburgh, Indiana. And we're going to get back to her in just a minute. But first, I want to start a countdown clock at zero, and we'll check back in after one minute. Well, you know, 200 years is a huge milestone, and there's lots to celebrate uh, from the past, the present, and the future. It's been really interesting to go through the history of the last 200 years of the community. As the community of Edinburgh prepares to celebrate their bicentennial, a team works together to document recent history 
history, interview folks in town, and compile facts and historical tidbits for daily social media posts. So we're, we're looking at, you know, the last 200 years in print media um, where, you know, photos were not photoshopped and, and we have an accurate, you know, depiction and, and story of what was going on at that time. And so that's what we're relying on. Which made her think, what will future generations find when looking back on today's media? Now with so much information, so much news just being shared on social media, it's going to be really interesting for our future historians, honestly, to um, be able to sift through all of that and find out the, the first source and what really happened. And stop. So that was one minute. While you met Sarah Beth, what else happened in one minute on the web? According to the data company Domo, in that one minute, 575,000 tweets posted to Twitter. Users watched 167 million TikTok videos, 5.7 million Google searches, 694 hours of video watched on YouTube, and customers spent $283,000 on Amazon. We are all hardwired to engage with the world using kind of mental shortcuts. Peter Adams is the Senior VP of Education for the News Literacy Project, a national nonprofit dedicated to helping educators and the general public sort through that avalanche of information all around us and separate fact from fiction. It's hard to recognize what we're looking at. It's hard to understand who the people are on the other side of that information, the influence of algorithms. Adam says we're programmed to graze online. It's part of our survival to wade through all the information available at our fingertips. But in doing that, we can go on autopilot and let the news find us rather than seeking out multiple credible sources and critical thinking. The, the biggest uh, kind of way that bad actors get around our rational minds and our critical thinking um, is to inflame strong emotions. If you start to feel those strong emotions from something you see in the media world, slow down, pause, engage kind of your your deeper critical thinking skills. Things that are highly controversial can be easily manipulated. Being a good steward of what you share online with family or friends not only helps stop the flood of misinformation, but it increases your credibility for the cause you believe in. Misinformation is exploitative, right? It doesn't help your politics, even if it seems to reinforce something that you believe or something that's important to you. We can find out what's happened in the last 200 years, but sometimes sorting through what happened in one minute of today requires that extra attention. You're going to want to pay some extra attention to the forecast today, too, because we've got some fog impacting the commute. Yeah, and that's really something you want to keep an eye out on in your morning commute as you're heading to work. So, Josh, what can you tell us? Yeah, uh, the good news is, at least in Waco, as you look at our extra co eagle eye there, look at how much improvement we have. This was really socked in with fog here around 5, 6 o'clock this morning. Now as we're heading towards that 7 o'clock hour, things really starting to clear out, which is good news. Notice the road's still pretty damp, though. This is why you need to give yourself some extra time. 47 degrees right now in Waco. Humidity's at 93%. Bell County, it's a little thicker as you look towards Colleen. And then when I take you over to Coppers Cove, that's where it's even thicker there as you look down Highway uh, 190 there. Temperatures that are sitting in the 30s and 40s out there. Look at the visibility uh, values. You're noticing that things are improving from the northwest as it's working in. This is some drier air that's going to cut this fog off here as we go through the morning. For the rest of us, though, likely going to be lasting through 8, 9, or 9, 10 o'clock this morning. That's where we officially have a dense fog advisory in effect for all of Central Texas through 10 a.m. Again, a weak front coming through is going to switch that wind around. That's going to help clear things out here as we go through the middle of the morning, and then by afternoon, things a lot better. Now, it will be cloudy once this fog clears out as well uh, because we still have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Upper 30s west of I-35 this morning, near 50 east. That's where you had a little bit more rain yesterday from that rain that moved through. Today will be dry, but we will see the clouds start to break out later on in the afternoon. That may be enough to push us up into the upper 50s as we top out around 57 in Waco, Temple, Colleen. Some areas out west may make a run towards 60, and that's our normal for this time of year. Notice that normal starting to increase a bit. It was in the 50s, now in the 60s, a sign that we're entering warmer patterns overall. Low Low 30s built in tonight. The potential for a light freeze northwest of Waco Temple Clean. For all of us, though, let's just go ahead and bring in the pets and the plants to be on the safe side. Not going to be a pipe busting freeze by any means. 57 today, 53 tomorrow, 31 overnight into Thursday. Thursday's when our next system arrives late in the day. A 20% chance of rain Thursday, 30% chance of rain on Friday with our next cold front. will be in the upper 40s behind it. North winds at around 20 miles per hour. That'll slowly bring in drier air. And look at the weekend, guys. 
Mid 60s start to build in with plenty of sunshine. The mornings will still be chilly, but the afternoons will be gorgeous this weekend. Then we're approaching the 70s by the middle of next week. So a warmer pattern trying to work on it. OK, sounds like a plan, Josh. And we want to thank you for starting your day with us. Good morning, America is next. And we'll see you right back here on 25 News Midday. We hope you have a great day.